through calls with other teams, having the ability to potentially move up tomorrow? Well, the process is one that uh, I can't say enough about the fantastic staff that we have, our, our college group, our international people. They've been working uh, very bizarre, you know, really think about the beginning of the season, the college season, international games where people are prohibited from attending games. So we watched a ton, a ton of games on film. Now they, they were able to go to some live events and putting all that together takes extreme amount of effort. And I can't say enough about our staff. Um, the, in terms of moving up, moving back, there's a lot of options on the table. We're going to do the best one for the Wizards, but we're definitely going to take our time. You don't want to commit to anything today. Something better comes along tomorrow. But I like where we're at. I think 15 is a good pick for us. We definitely want to get something in the second round. That's always a goal. Um, right now, that's not anything that uh, is available to us. So we'll continue to work the phones and do those things. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, Chris, I don't think anybody from Carolina is going to, going to go at 15. The only guy from Carolina we take 15 is Antoine, who's uh, in our draft room and still the best looking player that we have. There's a big guy that might be available, but yeah, maybe not at 15. Thanks, Tony. There you go. Thanks for the free tip. Chase. Hey, Tommy. Um, this draft is considered pretty special at the top. There's quite a few guys that maybe would be number one picks in other years. Or do you think that applies to the whole draft? Is it deeper? Um, is 15 different than 15 in another year? You know, we, we actually looked at a couple different scenarios and comparing them to previous years. I, I think it's at the top, it's a little bit more top heavy than maybe a couple last few drafts. But if you go one to 25, one to 30, I think you see a lot of older players that are included in that group, and that's not normal. There's, there's a lot of players that have had multiple years in college. That's not normal. I think COVID certainly predicted that uh, because people were able to return to college. I think last year, a lot of players that would normally have gone pro decided to go back to college because they weren't able to work out for teams. And if they didn't work out for teams, that would probably have them trapped in the second round. So a lot of that is there, Chase, to your point. It feels deeper because there's a lot more players that were in this draft um, because they were they didn't age out, if you will, from last year. And there's a lot of uh, international players that have a lot of intrigue. I'm not sure how many end up in the first round, but there'll, there'll be a couple, at least three or four maybe. Um, and then certainly in the second round, there'll be a little bit of influence there as well. And um... – you guys have obviously expanded your analytics department. Um, would imagine a lot more information at your disposal. Um, how, how has that kind of played into the drafts the last two years and in, in leading to Rui Hachimura and, and Denny Avdia? Well, I, I think everything that we've done in the last two years, to your point, trying to become a lot more data-driven, character, the high character-driven that, that we've always mentioned, um, now when you add a little bit more layers of data, a lot more information, it, it makes a – it kind of drives the map a little bit more efficiently. Uh, you still have a lot of voices in the room. You still have a lot of eyes, ears, and numbers kind of colliding sometimes. And especially, you got to think there's some there's some kids in this draft that were in a 15 game bubble in Orlando. And how do you factor that in versus the kid that played college at the same age in his games? Because a lot of college kids didn't play 18 games, 20 games. So it's an interesting way to look at numbers. You have to be careful. The dreaded phrase uh, small sample size that, that kind of applies this year so you really have to have done your homework on the EYBL national you know USA basketball tryouts things of that nature there's a lot more information now available but certainly this past season there, there's a uh, small sample sizes everywhere you turn around so you really have to have a great feel for maybe projecting a player forward where they're going to be in two years three years Fred Hey, Tommy, um, regarding the reports about Brad from this week, which I'm sure you saw, what, what is your communication been like with him throughout the off season? And uh, what do you make of that, that I guess the, the process of, of communication with him right now? Uh, the process of communication with Bradley is the same as for me. That it's always been, we call each other. I was with him in Vegas, went out there and watched a couple of the, um, the exhibition games. I was there for Argentina, Australia, and uh, we had a great time, caught up, talked about our coaching staff. Uh, and I think 
everything else to me, Fred, the outside noise is just noise. I don't comment on rumors or anything. I just know whenever I pick up the phone, we have a conversation. I give them updates, kind of what we were thinking. And, you know, Bradley Beal, first and foremost, I want to salute him, Russell Westbrook, for their Bradley's U17 team and their second place finish, Peach Jam. Russell's U16 Why Not team winning. Their commitment to grassroots basketball is tremendous. And I check with the, with the Players Association, with the NBA. We can't put them into our scouting pension, but I wish we could because they're great scouts. They're, they're down there seeing all these guys, and they report back to us. So they were very great uh, help on some of these young guys. I always ask players' opinions, talent, you know, players, no players. But in terms of our constant communication, nothing's changed, and I don't expect it to. And last year, leading into the draft, you were – you kind of set out, right? I think it was during this press conference last year that your guy's strategy was to select the player who you believe was the best player available. Uh, you know, circumstances change year to year. What is your guy's approach going into the draft in that regard this year? I think it's the same way. I think it being, there's a difference between nine and 15. I think at 15, we were a little bit more creative. There, there could be somebody that you say, hey, this guy, probably we can get him into the rotation in a year might be a little bit older, so maybe his upside's not quite as high. Maybe there's a project there that, that's going to take three or four years, but we have the vehicle to do that with the Capital City Go-Go, and we got a little bit better depth. So we'll just continue to weigh those things. Um, I, I'm not anywhere close to making a decision right now. We still have a lot of different things that we're looking at, and, and that's the way it always works. You prepare for the draft all year, and you still get down to the last day, and we owe it to the franchise. We owe it to, to the Wizards to certainly run out every single – possibility and there's still quite a few uh quite a few of those out there Fred, i do want to compliment your your you must have paid your wi-fi bill or something we, i could hear you clearly i could see you clearly that was better than uh wes's press conference so that's major props to you i to upgrade after that thanks yeah. Tom. you should kareem hey hey tommy how's it going good sir i want to ask about you know in the lab, you guys have been doing your homework on this draft and on free agency for all this time. And then all of a sudden you, you know, you hire Wes and you kind of bring his thoughts into the whole process. I'm, I'm just curious, what is it like kind of being integrating him and do, do things change much? Because, you know, he might have, you know, certain preferences or, or ideas that, you know, may have differed from what you guys were thinking previously. Well, I think almost to a man, if you ask every NBA head coach, they would probably say, get rid of the pick. We don't like rookies, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're as aware of everybody that we're looking at. We're going to spend some time. He just got back into town. We're going to spend some time going over it. And these are the guys that we look at. But I know, you know, from the interview time that we've had, the time that we spent on the phone every night discussing kind of where we want to see our roster post-free agency, he, he has a he has a very similar ideas that I do. We just want to continue to be a lot more athletic, a lot more versatile. And I think the opportunities to do that are there either through the draft, through trade, through free agency. And I think we're always going to be in, aligned in terms of the way we look at what our roster needs are and where we want to go. Um, it gives you a great deal of, of uh you know, confidence, I think, that, that we have some players that are a little bit more battle-tested than this time a year ago, some players that are our roster right now that weren't on our roster this time a year ago. So it gives you a little bit of, you know, confidence of what we have returning and then certainly the possibilities that are what out there uh, that are available. It gives us a lot more things to think about for sure. But we've, we've definitely discussed our roster and, and uh, ways that we can make it better. And one follow up for me, I'm just curious, you know, obviously, there's been a ton of talk about, you know, improving the defense, obviously, that's, you know, um, a, a priority. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm curious, but when you look at players, do you look at them from, hey, I want somebody that kind of has a little bit of a defensive mindset kind of already instilled? Or is that something that, hey, like you just said, hey, if we could get a, you know, good athleticism, we can teach you defense, it can teach you minds that mindset. I'm just curious if, if, if you, how you approach that, how you look at that facet between guys when you're evaluating guys. Well, I think everybody has a defensive mindset. It's just what do you demand from them on a day-to-day -day basis? What becomes your habits versus what you tolerate? If you don't tolerate shortcuts, if you demand a certain level, 
of, of participation on the defensive end, it makes it a lot more smooth. And, and that's one of the big things that attracted us to West uh, when he was in Denver, especially the last three years, being top 10 on offense, top 10 on defense, and he had a hand on both sides of the ball. I think he's, he's pretty familiar with how to integrate players into a defensive scheme that you can execute. And, and with all due respect to some of the players on Denver's roster, I wouldn't say they were known as great defenders, but it's the buy-in and it's the continuity and it's the day-to-day -day upkeep of the goals that you set at the beginning of the season. And I think that's something that he can certainly bring to us, you know, and I look at where we finished the season, um, regular season last year, these guys proved they can defend. Now we got to instill from day one all the way through the last game of the season and, and into the playoffs next year that this is how we're going to play and keep that, you know, kind of hold that line all the way through the season. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I mean, how are you, sir? Yeah, you look like you're in a uh, mob protection. trial. I can't see you. Yeah, you said I can like shout. Like I'm out. testifying against Gotti later today. So <laughs> you got some great, you got some great looking headphones on though. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hey, just uh, just for bookkeeping sake, um, there has been no um, request or no discussion from Brad or his representatives about wanting to be traded. That's correct. OK. Um, secondly, you, you have said and you think that there's there's ways to improve the team. How without going into detail, because you won't and can't, obviously. Where do you think, or what do you think the, the improvement level can be through free agency and trades in the draft to get you to the next level next season? Well, certainly it all starts with hopefully the players that we do have here from last year got better over the summer. And that's a big, big part of it player development wise. But certainly there's a whole lot of free agents that would love to play with Bradley Bill, that would love to play with Russell Westbrook. Our job is to find the best valued ones. And again, this time last year, I don't think some of the guys that we signed, they weren't necessarily head turners. They weren't people that were household names, but finding those value guys that can come in and perform, I think that's an area, you know, we've really tried to identify and, and bring those names forward. And then certainly, like I said, there's always an opportunity to make a trade if you have enough good young players. And I've gotten mm -hmm. enough inquiries on, our, on guys on our roster that makes me feel like, hey, we have good players on this roster. We have to get better, there's no question. But free agency represents a lot of things, not just necessarily right now, but for the future. You, know, you get an idea who has a, an appetite to come to D.C. And I would say pretty much uh, we've heard from the key people that we're really interested in. And, I, you know, in terms of their agents, getting a feel for where it's going to be. Obviously, we can't have any discussions until August 2nd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, what I do, I, I read The Athletic. I get tips from Fred and yourself and, and there you go. out there rumored. That's all I need. So it's been very helpful. It's I appreciate a, that. It's, a, it's important that, that you keep yeah. us in, in mind. Thank you. Well, I, I know I, this, Dave. <laughs> DA, seriously, I, I think most free agents would love to play with Bradley Bill, to play yep. with Russell Westbrook, to be in the nation's capital. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think we're limited by what we have this year. We're not a cap space team. So we have to right. be very judicious how we carve up our exceptions. And I think we've proven that in the past, that that's something we take very serious and we try to identify and do the best we can there. And that's not going to change this year for sure. Thank you, sir. Chase. I mean, kind of going off what you said in that last answer, when it comes to young players and, and teams calling about them, how will you kind of weigh this off season between, you know, I guess in a way sacrificing the future for the present and, and maybe parting with some of these guys that you have developed and, and like their futures. Well, it's like we've always said, Chase, you want to prepare for the big moment and be ready for the big moment. And you'll know when that moment comes because people will be calling you about it. We don't go intending to trade anybody on our roster. Right. But when those moments present themselves in, in the last two years, I think we've shown we, we're not shy to do anything that we think makes the Wizards better. Um, our player development piece is going on right now. You know, Rui's playing for Japan in huge games. He gets to play today against Luka Doncic. Slovenia, that's a huge game for him. That's a, a big step up. So in the last calendar year, Rui's played in the NBA playoffs. He's played in the Olympics. That's huge for a player in it going into his third season in the NBA. Then he's been cleared now uh, to get out on the court 
and, and start to do some stuff. We'll get them integrated into some more contact stuff in a week or two. That's big time steps for us. And then we get ready for summer league with whoever we draft and some of the, the key people that we want to have with Cassius Winston, Caleb Holmesley. Those are player development pieces. So we have a lot of that going on. And then hopefully the whole month of September, we'll be able to have open gyms and, and Wes come in and, and spend some time with our players and integrate some of the systems. So we're ready to hit training camp running healthy and uh, hopefully with more talent. Neil. Hey, Tommy, obviously you guys will be able to give Brad an extension offer, you know, come October. Do you feel that in the next two months that you guys have between draft free agency, you said it yourself, you know, you guys aren't a cap space team. You said you can't be a running back team as well. Do you feel like these two months upcoming are going to be the make or break, whether Brad continues to be in the uniform next season? I don't think anything's ever make or break with anything. You know, what we got to do is continue to push to get better and show value, show that we've gotten better across the board. You know, I, I don't know how to say it any more strong than that, that, that an extension is available in October. That's something that'll be there the moment it's available. There's no pressure on Bradley other than I just want to make sure we respect the day that it's available, that it's there. That's what we did the last time when we did the extension that no one thought we could do. But the next two months is really our responsibility is to watch the Wizards getting better. And we've tried to do everything we can uh, as well thought out as we can, not do cut corners or do anything. Somebody asked earlier about are we sacrificing the future for now? I think there's ways to get better for next season and ways to, to have something in the bank to continue to improve in the outer years uh, that, that you can do parallel to each other at the same time. And it, I, I think that's certainly something we're striving for. And in the communication that you're saying that you're having with Brad, you know, consistently, constantly, is it more so you always letting him know what you're thinking or is he giving you ideas of, okay, you know, if this is the direction that we might go in, that would be something that I would be, you know, positive about. Sometimes I just want to talk about his U17 team and, and wish his son a happy third birthday. You know, those are conversations are okay too right now. So we of talk course. about everything. All right. Thank you, Tommy. Chris Miller. Tommy, you know better than anybody, a staff for a first-year head coach is extremely valuable. Um, will Wes have final say on his staff, or will you make some recommendations? And are there any staff members you guys are willing to announce today? We're not ready to announce today, but we got a lot of exciting candidates for sure. And it's something that, you know, I give Wes pretty wide Rain, you know, he, he's got to be comfortable with his staff. And most of the names we've discussed, we have them in common anyway. I think the most important thing is to get that piece right. We're not in a rush. We have summer league coming up, certainly, but Wes is here. Um, he is a first time head coach, but he's been an assistant for 24 years in the NBA. One great aspect for Wes is his experience of working with first time head coaches. So he remembers working with Mark Jackson. He remembers working with Jock Vaughn. It is hard to be a first-time head coach. He took a lot of those lessons. You know, spent time with Malone uh, in Denver, and he had a great deal of responsibility. That's not the 18 inches next to him, no question. But he, he's not your typical first-time head coach with his experience that he's had, Chris. And I think he's going to surround himself with some people, uh, possibly a former NBA head coach or two. But regardless, there's going to be people that have been there's a lot of years of service with them and we're going to have a very creative staff. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. There's clearly a calendar to get ready for the summer league. How do you see that envisioned with his staff? Will he coach the summer league and um, will Denny be a part of, of the summer league also? We're not going to make any decisions on Denny anytime soon. It's going to go as his health goes and as his clearance goes for me, I'd rather have him be hundred percent healthy all summer long. And playing in the summer league games is certainly something we'll discuss, but I'd rather have zero setbacks so we're ready for the season. Um, in terms of West coaching games, I think we're still knocking that around. Um, we're going to have a lot of opportunities to be around our, our roster guys as well. And I think for him as a first-time head coach, spending time with your roster guys who you know are under contract, who are going to be here in the fall, maybe more beneficial time-wise, more efficient than being constantly immersed in the summer league stuff. Wes has coached summer league before. He's coached NBA games before. 
it, he'll probably run all of our practices, obviously, for summer league. But if given the choice, I, I think he's got some really capable ideas of assistant coaches that we're discussing anyway that can handle summer league. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still kicking that around. First summer league game isn't until August 8th. Um, we're, we're still trying to finalize the staff. The calendar doesn't dictate that the staff has to be done by August 8th. It has to be certainly by the first preseason, you know. So we'll, we'll take our time with that.